Hi folks, I'm Jar Jar, welcome to Base Corner. I'll tell you about my bases first of all. I've got the uh, Fender American Standard Jazz 5 string and a little old Korean Squire, also made by Fender, uh, but obviously made in Korea, just a standard 4 string jazz. Uh, I went on to 5 string some years ago when we were recording a certain album that I realised that it would be nice to go below the standard range of a bass, which to you anoraks out there is E Concert. The five string takes you down to B concert, and it's been really useful having that extra fifth in the range. Um, fairly standard in their makeups, two pickups. The pickups basically pick up the vibration of the string and electronically pass it through the guitar to the output and into the amp. And depending on which of those two pickups you choose to use, will give you a certain tone. Exactly the same with Slim's guitars. Um, the Four string is a little bit different because anyone who's seen this before you'll realise that it's got the little Sims lights in it. I'll bring the bass to you. These are fitted by Martin Sims. Um, he's made a really good name for himself. He started off very kindly coming to one of our gigs and offering us these. Now this is the fourth version of Martin's talents that I've actually owned. I chose the circle in the body uh, just for a change. I did have a bass with and round the pick guard, which was quite effective. Yes, Martin, he first introduced himself to us and uh, he showed us a couple of guitars where he'd actually fitted them in the markers on the neck. And uh, he threw the switch and we were blown away. And he very kindly said, look, we'll stick him in your instruments if you'll uh, give us a name check. And we've been doing it ever since. Martin has gone an awful lot further and uh, done fantastically well all over the world with his products, supplying people like Billy Sheehan, Steve Vai, an absolute host of stars. Definitely worth checking out his website, which I believe to be simsled.co.uk. But if you just Google Sims, S-I-M-S, Sims Lights, you'll get to his site. All kinds of photographs there, me included, Slim included, and you can see what he's, he's got up to. Fantastic. Right, for those of you still awake, I'll tell you a bit about my base gear. This is a Trace Elliott GP12 SMX 350 watt base head. It's just mono, that's all you really need for bass guitar, in most circumstances anyway. Um, I've had this amp for 15 years, it's been fantastic, I've got no need to change it. Um, this section here, the little row of white dots, that's a graphic equaliser. And for those of you who don't know, the graphic equaliser will allow you to actually pinpoint certain frequencies. It's not just a treble, it's not just a mid, it's not just a bass. Having said that, for bass guitar, there's a lot of treble frequencies that you wouldn't ordinarily need. So this particular graphic is geared towards bass frequencies. Um, this little thing here, and again for those of you who may not have noticed, is that I'm using a radio system. I don't use a lead and I haven't done for some years. It's purely out of choice rather than for safety reasons. Um, I'm not the most animated of bass players. I tend to stand in one spot. Um, the sod's law is if I was to use a lead, which I've done in the past, I'll take one step to the right and stand right on the lead. This eliminates any chance of that happening. So this is just a, uh, an AKG SR80, a, a dual diversity radio, which means it's got two aerials. Technically, in layman's terms, that means that if one aerial defaults because you're in a bad spot, the other one supposedly picks up. Touch wood, that's not let me down, it's been fantastic too. Sitting on the top here is just a little tuner, um, nothing special. It does the job, uh, enough said. If you just look over my shoulder, I'll tell you a bit about my cabinets. You can't buy these in the shops. I've had all kinds of different cabinets, I'll mention no names because I'm not dissing them so to speak, they've been great. But these have been absolutely fantastic. I've had these for around eight years now. And they're made by a guy called John Kinross from Milton Keynes. He's a fan of the band and uh, he's a very clever man. He's one of these guys who will take a driver, that's the chassis of the speaker itself, he'll literally read all the blurb on it and he can work out exactly what the literage for the cabinet should be for a certain frequency, blah, blah, blah. He, brought these along to a rehearsal once, I plugged them in, the rest is history. They've been fantastic. So basically there are 400 watt each cabinet. Obviously I don't use anything like that kind of power. 
John's very particular about the way he makes a cabinet, and it's interesting in the sense that these are made of chipboard. Now, ordinarily, they'd be made of plywood because of their strength, and chipboard isn't very strong. Uh, certainly not if you banged it against the door if you were carrying the cab out. But he's particular to the point of making them a chipboard simply because his theory, and understandably, is that there's less chance of there being a dead spot in a composite wood like chipboard than there is a plywood. Uh, now, all I've got to do is be really careful about carrying it through a doorway and not losing the corner of the cabinet. Now, just one last piece of my equipment, and I'll consider it the most important, and I'll show you. It's these, my earplugs. I simply can't work without these anymore. Um, years and years ago, I was in retail. I managed a, a large music store down in Essex. And I'd be taking cabinets out of boxes, and on the back of the box there'd be a plaque, and it would say, warning, this appliance can damage your health. And 20 years ago, I used to think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, for about five or six years, I've been paying the price. Wear earplugs as quickly and as soon as you can. Now, just one last thing. Bass players among you might notice that I've got a really weird technique. About 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with focal dystonia. Now, this basically to the man in the street, it means nothing. And ironically, it means very little to a lot of doctors as well. Basically, focal dystonia is a part of your brain that doesn't send the message to the finger or to whatever limb you're trying to activate. In my case, it affects just my first finger on my right hand. Now, in day-to-day -day tasks, that wouldn't matter. But to play in the bass with fingers, which I always used to do, it's, it, it's critical. And uh, uh, this gave me a lot of grief about 15, 16 years ago. It really worried me. Um, I had to do something about it. And I've gone on to using a thumb pick. These two are now ordinary thumb picks. If you look at that, you can see the white section now that ordinarily would go around and be a complete curve. What I've had to do to get any kind of sensitivity from that thing is to get a thinner pick, chop the white pick off and literally gaffer tape in a thinner pick. And that's what's strange about my technique. So because of this condition, I can't even hold a flat pick for long because it would just slip away. But with the safety of that clip to my thumb, I'm home and dry. And that's it. Thanks for your interest.